find mob behavior uh, using these technologies right. may, may not necessarily be the most uh, comforting idea. On the other hand, we do see uh, the ability to rapidly communicate uh, mm. with each other or to disseminate information quickly. We know that had a really strong effect on the uh, uh, Obama campaign, for example. Sure. Heavy use was made of this ability to link people together quickly. Uh, so I hope that it doesn't get abused, but, uh, but it's certainly there. What, what are some other aspects of, um, uh, if, if you like, um, cultural customization of the Internet? You spoke of uh, the fact that, uh, from a demographic perspective, the, the Internet now is m dom not predominantly, but dominantly Asian. And that might have a, a coloring effect on how the Internet is used in the future, or perhaps even now. Can you give some uh, examples of what that means? Well, let's see. We, the uh, estimated uh, uh, populations of uh, Asian users is somewhere on the order of 670 uh, million people. Right. And that is the largest single grouping, although you and I both understand uh, that Asia is a very, very diverse place. And yes. So to lump everybody together as Asian and then try to say something about that is, uh, is really not productive. On the other hand, what it does say is that among all the cultures that are involved, the Chinese and the Indians especially, uh, their content is going to become increasingly a part of the Internet uh, uh, materials. Up until now it hasn't been, but it's because their presence in the net has been fairly recent. Mm. But as time goes on, that presence will have longevity to it, and more and more content will be produced by bloggers and by you know, email and by web pages and so on. So I think that it has several uh, implications. One of them is that for any company that's interested in doing business using information uh, through the internet needs to recognize that the markets are uh, more demographically diverse than they ever have been before. Right. And they need to recognize that the uh, cultural patterns and behaviors and interests of those markets are going to be quite diverse. And so that which sells in North America may not be of any interest to somebody in uh, central India mm. uh, or in western China. Uh, and so understanding that, uh, that this diversity has to be accommodated somehow, I think, is going to drive many companies to um, require them to have facilities in those various countries or at least to have access to expertise in those countries. I mean, certainly Google has discovered that. That's why we have offices in a number of places around the world, in order to adapt to the requirements of the region. And, and do you foresee a, a need for, um, say, the, uh, the global landscape of capacity to shift even more so than it, than oh, it does? Well, that's a very interesting question. And certainly, if you look at the fiber capacity maps from telegeography and others, you know, there's a yeah. gigantic connection between Europe and the United States. Uh, yes, no doubt. I think you're quite right about that because as more and more people come online and demand more services uh, from the Internet, then they are going to need more capacity in order to do that. I've been, I was very impressed in Seoul, uh, South Korea, to see people looking at uh, streaming video on the Internet on their, on their mobiles at 14 megabits a second. Right. This is uh, thanks to the CDMA technology, I guess. And a free trial that they uh, had there. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that there was an economic component to this. There was ah, probably. Ah, okay, so that might make a difference. And now you have to pay for this. Oh, right. well, okay, well, now let me think about that. Right. Well, I think what, what's, but what's happened is since, since these free trials have ended, people still do watch it. They're just not spending an hour a day on the okay. subway as they were during the, the, uh, those trials. Well, thank you for that indication. I didn't realize that the, 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 that was part of the equation, so that's a very helpful uh, uh, grace note <laughs> to interpret the results. But it, but it does bring up my, my, my final question, which is obviously I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that we believe this year to be the greatest economic contraction since the Second World War. Um, and people's ability to buy and spend are obviously yeah. constrained as it, uh, globally as, as never before. What do you see this, how do you see this impacting the internet and internet usage in the coming year? So it, uh, I'm not necessarily a great guru on this point, but I, let me make a couple of observations. The first one is that Internet can potentially benefit from the serious situation we're in. For one thing, it can save money, because if you don't have to go somewhere physically, 
uh, to carry out business, you may in fact choose to use internet-based resources in order to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are in the advertising business, <clears throat> you may conclude that online advertising, at least reaching that population which is online, is more effective than traditional media for uh, inducing people to uh, be aware of and maybe purchase new products and services. So there's an efficiency factor there. In some ways, uh, this kind of contraction uh, has a bright potential to it. Uh, when we stop and think about um, how to invigorate the economy, in the case of the United States, it's going to, a lot of it is going to be investment in new infrastructure whether it's refurbishing the schools or replacing bridges or putting in 21st century road systems or 21st century telecommunications right. facilities, all of that is an important investment in uh, the country, uh, the country's infrastructure, which in turn, in theory, should permit the United States and any other country that's uh, faced with a similar situation to uh, improve its long-term uh, economic potential. Uh, to say nothing of giving people jobs, which increases the speed of money and, and so on. Right. So I'm actually oddly um, encouraged by the response that we're seeing um, to this really uh, amazing contraction. I, for all I know, it may actually be even worse than the uh, one pre-World War II, um, you know, during the uh, uh, the Depression. Um, so in the long run, though, these open societies and, uh, and free markets have tended to be very, very resilient. Yeah. And so they have the, the nice uh, feature that even though they are more connected now than they ever were with the globalization, and so the downside was swift, yes. it could be that the upside will be equally swift because of the connection and linkages. Excellent. And thank you very much for your time. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.